principle as to what a Christian, one who's consecrated to the Lord, should look like. One of the things that the Nazarite was not allowed to do was to touch dead things. And I believe those dead things represent those things of the world that have absolutely no profit for our lives. The things of this world that would only contaminate us and would only lead us astray from God. This Nazarite was supposed to do everything he could to stay away from touching dead bodies or from drinking wine or touching anything that was unclean. And we as Christians should understand the caliber of what was done in the cross. And if we truly believe that what Christ did for us to cleanse us from sin, to sanctify us, is really important to us, then it should reflect in the way that we live. We should take sin seriously. And that's how you tell when a Christian is maturing, when he takes sin seriously. Because it was our sin that put the Son of God to die for us in the cross. We should desire to be as He is because He is pure. 33 years Jesus walked on the earth as a man. And He took sin very seriously. He never sinned. And we as Christians should look and ask God to give us the strength to overcome sin in our lives. We should be meditating upon the Word of God and abiding in Him so that we can and will overcome sin in our lives. And look at what he says in the next verse. He says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So then, In verse 3, he's speaking about the one whose hope is in Jesus, whose hope is to be like Jesus, that they, that hope that they have causes them to be unmixed, causes them to live a pure moral life before God. And the opposite is true of the person that doesn't care about that. When he says here, whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, he's speaking about People that live in a way that is lawless, in a way without restrictions, without any boundaries in their life towards sin. And he says this is breaking the law of God. We as Christians should not live lawless lives. It doesn't mean that we're bound to the Old Testament law. It doesn't mean that we're bound to do Old Testament rituals but we're bound to the law of the Spirit, to the law of the Spirit of Christ, which is righteousness, which is honoring God. And then he tells us what sin is. He says, for sin is the transgression of the law. It's very important for us to understand what the definition of sin. We've uh, touched on that point uh, in another episode, but it's very important for us to know because in preaching the gospel, Before anybody can be a beneficiary of the gospel, they need to understand what sin is. Because you need to know why Jesus died for us. It was our sin, because we broke the law of God. We broke His commandments. And because we broke His law, we are worthy of His justice, which the Bible says is death. The soul that sinneth shall die. The Bible says that Jesus paid the price for us. In fact, the next verse he says, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. You cannot be living in willful sin, in willful sin and say, that you're abiding in Jesus. You may have struggles, you may have battles and things that you're dealing with in your life, but if you're satisfied with that, if you feel like there's nothing wrong with that, then that is a serious problem. If God has given you light on that area, 
if you know and understand that it's wrong, but yet you don't feel any remorse, yet you don't feel bad about it, that can be a very, very bad sign that something is wrong in your life. We as Christians should pursue holiness. Paul tells us to pursue holiness because no one, without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no one shall see Him. And one of the signs that we have the Holy Spirit in us is that we are living holy lives, is that we're yearning to be more and more holy each and every day, not more prideful, not more, not to, for us to think that we're better than others, but to try to live a life in which we consecrate ourselves in devotion to God. Amen. Let me read this scripture again. Whosoever, that means whoever, committeth sin, transgress. Now, I want to stop here for a second to look at the two meanings of this word transgress in the Greek. First, like the pastor said, it is breaking, but it's also a violation. Now, a violation of what? It is the act of doing something that is not allowed by a law or a rule. The act of showing disrespect. And in this sense, is disrespect to holiness, disrespect to God. Now, brothers and sisters, when we commit sin, and what I'm saying, and I'm not talking about sin that we commit, which we're dealing with, but I'm talking here deliberate sin when you go out there and do sin, when you know you're sinning and you just do it because you want to do it, right? First of all, there is no fear of God. When I was a child, a lot of things that I did, I just did, and I really didn't think I, what I was doing. But when I knew that I was doing something wrong, I knew that I was going to have consequences with my father. I knew that when I got home, my father was going to deal with me. Now, what I don't understand is how can people think that they could go on sinning deliberately and think everything's going to be okay? Friends, God calls for change. He calls for transformation. And we see that in the in Paul's life. And the only way you and I are going to experience this is not just about hearing about Jesus. It's about having the same experience that Paul did when he fell off that horse. See, Paul heard about Jesus all along when he was persecuting Christians. He heard that Jesus was healing people. He's heard all these wonderful miracles that Jesus did, but yet that didn't transform them. It wasn't until he had an encounter with God. And brothers and sisters, it's not about saying that you're a Christian. It's about having an encounter with God. When you have an encounter with God, you would want to change. You would want to be like your father. The reason you are not like your father is because there's still in you part of the world. That's why God calls us to holiness. He says, be holy for I am holy. He didn't say, listen, uh, you accepted me, go continue living your sin. Hey, listen, you're saved, you're sealed. You know, he said, oh, wait a minute. There's got to be a transformation here. And this transformation doesn't happen right away. There are changes that happen right away, but it's a gradual change. You know, Paul fell off the horse. He couldn't see. He was prayed over. He was able to see. He started going and preaching, and then he obeyed the Father. He went to the Gentiles. He went to preach. He went to save souls. This is the same thing we need to do. We were in clubs before. God touches. 
Now we go to clubs to take people out, not to associate with people there, but to get them out of there. If you were in drugs, when God touched you, yeah, go to the drug people, but pull them out of the drugs. Don't join them. If you were an alcoholic, the same thing. If you were a wife beater, change. God demands a change. And it's our responsibilities of children of God not to do what we want, but to do what he wants. And that's what Jesus says. I do the will of the father that sent me. Who is your father? Who are you representing? Are you representing Satan or are you representing Christ? A child of God will do what God wants. In verse 6, the Apostle John says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth had not seen him, neither known him. Here's a very important key. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. We looked at what it means to abide in Christ in a couple of episodes ago. And it is a very important key to live a life of holiness. When it's speaking about abiding in Jesus, it's speaking about a intimate fellowship with Christ. A person who's enjoyed intimate fellowship with Christ knows what true love, what true peace is. And a person who's experienced that knows that sin gets in the way of our fellowship. Sin gets in the way of our ability to be able to be aware of God's presence in our lives. Because sin causes separation in our conscience, in our hearts. And the Bible tells us that if we regard iniquity, if we regard sin in our hearts, God will not hear us. And a person who values a relationship with Christ will not live in sin, will repent as soon as he's aware of that sin because his heart is pure in his devotion towards Jesus Christ. You cannot tell me that you enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit. You cannot tell me that you enjoy abiding with Jesus while at the same time taking pleasure in sin because it's just not compatible. I mean, I, I, I would understand if you're a new Christian and there's still things that you haven't come to the understanding of, you haven't come to the knowledge but part of the Christian life is progression. We start as babies. And at first, there's things that babies do that they have no, they have no awareness whether what they're doing is right or wrong. But they begin to grow. And one of the ways in which they grow is in their understanding and their ability to be able to tell from right and from wrong. And whenever there's a child that realizes what he did was wrong and doesn't have any remorse, we understand that there is something wrong with that child. He doesn't feel sorry for that he hurt somebody else. He doesn't feel sorry. He doesn't feel bad about that the fact that he lied and that he did something wrong. And, and that's why it's so important for the parents to be involved and to discipline the child. And the Bible says the, the, the son who God loves, he disciplines. If you can live in sin without God's discipline on your life, without a remorse, then there's something seriously wrong. Because God is a good father. And he will discipline us. He will discipline his children. Because he loves us that much. He wants us to be changed and transformed. That is the mission of Christ. He is the author and finisher of our faith. And if truly his spirit is in us, then we should have desires to be like him. It says, he who sinneth has not seen him, neither knoweth him. And that's one of the issues that we're facing in modern Christianity, is that we identify ourselves as Christians by what we declare with our mouths, as Brother Lewis has said. But rather what makes us Christians is that we're following Christ. A Christian is a person that follows Christ. Not just 
a person who stands on 